Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, traders from across the globe. Welcome to the Short Term Trading Live with Oscar. Okay, traders, today is Friday, June 27th, 2008. Yesterday, we came out and did a video for you, and we were talking about an up Omni, and boy, oh boy, did we get that wrong, guys. What do you think? We called for... <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. That, that was just wrong. You know what? The analysis was sound. I put some charts up for you to see, but you know, you're not always going to get it right. Luckily, thank the stars and thank you analysis that we've had way, way, way more winning trades than losing trades, but you can't always get them right, right? And there's a lot of fans who follow me, a lot of people who follow my YouTube videos, a lot of people at the site, and we get lots of letters. And in those letters, you know, I, every now and then one touches me and I don't mind reading it. And being that we had a losing day and I got a letter, I thought I would read that to you. So we, I got a letter from one of our fans. And this letter is from a good buddy of mine. And his name is Connor. Connor, thank you for the letter. And the letter simply states, Oscar, great call yesterday, you donkey. You know what, Connor, here's what I got to say to you. <laughs> That's about all I got to say about this. Oh, are you kidding me? All right, traders, I want you to pull up a chair and grab a pen or a piece of paper and a pencil because I got a bunch of charts I want to show you. Boy, oh boy, have they done some damage to this S&P market. The Dow Jones Industrials, the Transports, the E-Mini Russell, the NASDAQ. Boy, have they given them a bit of a shellacking. The dollar index included. I mentioned that the head and shoulders formation, the huge formation, was still hovering above the indice markets. But we were hoping for, as the analysis lined up for Thursday, we'd get the Thursday pop and the Friday drop. Well, as you all have known, Thursday was a major down day. There was no pop at all. And now the charts have really revealed themselves. And that head and shoulders formation that I've been yelling at you about video after video for the last couple of weeks has really, really begun to take its hold on the markets. So with no further ado, traders, let's go look at some charts because we've got a lot of homework to do together in this video. Okay, traders, the first chart we're looking at is the Dow Jones Industrial Average Daily Bar Chart. Look at this, traders, because we talked about this for months on end as it was happening and while it happened and after it took place. We mentioned there was a huge head and shoulders back here, and then we did a projection, which you can see with that red line, and lo and behold, the market broke right down to the exact area where the projection came in. Very interesting, but head and shoulders formations will do that for you if you read them properly and you know how to get projections from them. So time starts to pass and we build another one, traders. It is right here. It is before your eyes. This is the one I've been yelling at you about for weeks on end. We kidded around. We did head and shoulders videos. We talked about dandruff. We talked about one after the next after the next head and shoulders showing up within these head and shoulders right here. But bottom line is the head and shoulders is in place. And look at the breakdown right here, traders. We broke all the way down to here. Projections are as low. These red lines go even lower than the chart will show you. Projections are as low as 108.15 or 10.815. And then 10.630. We're talking down numbers here. 10.815. And if it gets under that, we're going to 10.630. 30 traders, that is the projection that we get from the head and shoulders formation. The one back here worked really, really well. There's no reason why this projection will not work as equally well as the last one. There are many charts I'm about to show you now, and almost all of them point in the same direction. So let's go looking. Okay, traders, now we are looking at the cash S&P daily bar, the cash daily bar. And we're going to start again with the previous head and shoulders. And that was the one back here that topped off the market. You had shoulder, head, shoulder, and then the big drop. The projection is here. You can see that the drop and the projection were very, very close to the same level. But within the head and shoulders, you had a head and shoulders right inside the head, the head of the head and shoulders. Then you had another head and shoulders take place. 
and then we began to drop. And then as it rallied up and created the right shoulder, you had a head and shoulders here. You had a head and shoulders here. And then, boom, the big drop comes. Now we've marked some time, and here we are again, the head and shoulders formation. But look inside of this head and shoulders formation. You had an inverse or inverted head and shoulders, which then led to an upright bearish head and shoulders, which then led to another head and shoulders within the big head and shoulders, and then we broke down out of it as of Thursday. Wow, that is extremely reminiscent of this one right here. And here we are breaking down. Traders, when you do analysis, analysis repeats itself over and over again. What you've seen happen in the past, if you are watching it correctly and doing your homework, you will see happen again. And that projection is way down to 1239. First stop, 1239 off of the head and shoulders projection as we mark some time going forward. Every market that moves lower in this fashion will spend some time moving up a little and then back down, of course. But the projections are as low now as the 1239 area. And there are projections even lower, but let's stay conservative, although that's a big projection. But based on this formation right here, just like we based our projection on this formation, which brought us to here, we have projections all the way down to 1239. That's the cash S&P. Let's go look at a few other charts now. Okay, traders, the next chart you're looking at is the Dow Jones Transportation Average. And once again, I'm sure you can clearly see the head and shoulders formation. And look at what's happened. We have now broken below the Omni Proprietary Moving Average. Well below it and on its way down. Traders, the next stop is the 4827 area where the 200 ball moving average is. And if you want to talk about respect being paid to an average, look at how it does not get above, does not get above, does not get above. When it finally does, it breaks out and boom, heading right back down for it now. So even if it does not get through it, that's still a pretty big down move that we're going to see just getting to the 4827 area. And if it does break, as it should, the projections on this head and shoulders are for much lower traders. This is no joke. This is happening before our eyes. The fundamentals always come out in the charts first. We've been screaming at you about this coming out in the charts. And this means there's a huge fundamental that's going to knock us lower. And here it comes right before your eyes. Traders, that is a credit to technical analysis. It works so well. You have to learn how to do this, traders. And we can show you how to do this over and over again. If you simply come on down to our site, it's www.livewithoscar.com. Grab yourselves a free membership. Jump in class with us and let us show you how to view these markets technically. Again, you will not get every trade and every day right, but the majority of your trades will be in the proper direction of the day if you use your analysis techniques properly. Let's look at a few more charts here. Okay, traders, when you are looking at indices, you are supposed to look at all of the indice charts and see if they look the same. Now we are looking at the NASDAQ daily bar, the September contract, and look at this NASDAQ. Head and shoulders clearly defined with these three circles right here. Shoulder, head, shoulder, and look what's happened here. Once again, we are below the Omni's proprietary average and severely below it, traders. That is a telltale signal that we are going to start to head south in this market. Again, remember, not every market drops straight down. But if this picture stays the way it looks now, we continue to close a couple of days below this proprietary average, we are heading downtown, traders, undoubtedly. Each and every one of these indice charts I'm showing you have the same look and have major projection towards the downside. And if you're following the talking heads on TV, they're giving you all the fundamentals you need to know that we're going down, but the charts let you know it's coming out first. Always the fundamentals come out in the charts first. But we're not finished, traders. Waiting to see the rest of these charts. Let's keep looking. Okay, traders, now we are going to step the view out a little bit, a bit of a longer-term view, and we are going to look at the cash 
S&P weekly chart. These are weekly bars now. Each green bar represents a week's worth of trading. And look at what you have going on here. Two major averages giving you an extreme amount of information if you view this properly. We will start with the 200 bar moving average. Look at this average and look where we are now. This average you could not get above, you could not get above, you could not get above. When you finally did get above, you had a break up and a serious bull run for quite some time. And it is finally just now getting below and is below that 200 bar average. Traders, that works out for the last eight years if you look at your weekly chart. Then you have the proprietary, the omni-proprietary average right here. And this one is an extremely good average for direction. And look what happened here. A test and it bounced off. A test and it bounced off and went above once again. A test here and it rallied. A test here and it rallied. Now we had gotten below it and it broke down. It hit the 200 bar average, rallied right back to the exact point of the Omni proprietary average and has continued to drop ever since all the way to here. Look at how that works. From one average to the next, up and down, and then of course you have the 49 bar average sitting right here, and that came in at the exact same spot that the market topped out on the weekly and has been breaking ever since. Now we're below the 200 bar average, traders. The whole world watches the 200 day moving average, this is the 200 bar moving average because it's overlaid on a weekly. And look at how we are now below it. And traders, I kid you not, there's almost nothing that's going to stop this market from going south, barring some miracle that the Fed can pull off in the United States. But I don't know that they have a trick that they can pull off for us. That analysis is telling you, do not fall in love with any upside moves here. But let's look at a few more charts just to be sure. Okay, traders, let's step that view out a lot further now. Let's go to a quarterly chart. This is the S&P Cash quarterly bar chart. Each one of these green lines represents three months of trading. Talk about always sell double tops. You couldn't get a better double top signal than that when it occurred. Since then, we have been steadily dropping three, six into our ninth month of going down since those highs were set. And look at the stochastics up here, traders, all the way up and really hooking down now and really starting to look like this thing is in a spiral towards the downside. You don't see support all the way until a bit over a, a thousand, maybe 1100 and change. And then the next support's all the way down around the 770 mark. I am not calling for that. That would be an insane move. Who knows what we're going to get. But heed the warnings, traders, that double top is nothing to be kidding with. That is a very serious indicator, and down we have come ever since that double top's been put in. And with those stochastics sitting here, I kid you not, that is just another serious indication that we have some big downside coming our way. Let's look at a couple of more charts now that sort of hover around the indice action and see what they look like. Okay, traders, what I find extremely interesting is when markets that are not in a grouping, in other words, you have indice markets, NASDAQ, S&P, E-mini Russell, the Dow Jones, you know, you have all your indice markets, and they behave a certain way, and usually together they'll act as a whole. Well, you have indice markets that should be doing something different at that point in time. Well, what I find extremely interesting is that the Omni's proprietary average and the 49 bar average came in at the exact meeting spot, just like it did in the current in the indice markets. This happened in the currency market. This is the euro currency you're looking at, and we exploded for two days out of that formation. It's rare that these two come together, and when they do, look at the explosiveness of rally you get from it. Well, they came together right here, traders. And we have exploded since, and now we are testing what's a very large apex formation. I don't know that we're ready to blow out of the apex formation on the upside yet. Probably more work needs to be done within it. However, when you see those averages converge and the market gets above them, 
generally you got a move coming in your direction towards the upside. And if the euro currency looks like this, well then the dollar index should look opposite of that. You should have the dollar index have tested averages and drop below them, right? That was, that's a picture that you would expect. Let's go take a look at the dollar index chart now and see what that looks like. Okay, traders, you are now looking at the dollar index September daily bar chart. And lo and behold, look what happened here. Last time the averages came together, look at the size drop we had. And now the averages have come together at the exact spot that the S&P broke down from when the Fed made its announcement of no rate move. No rate movement by the Fed and the dollar just broke to the downside. But the interesting thing is that those two averages converged in the dollar index and the dollar index is not the euro currency and those averages should not just be converging together like that. That is a very serious signal traders. You see those same averages converging and repelling the market in all of those indice charts I just showed you, or most of them at least, and now you see it in the currency markets, and look at how we had resistance right up here in the dollar index. The market ran right up, tagged that resistance, and broke to the downside. Now we have support in a parallel off the resistance, and we are through that support and through the major support lines in the dollar index, traders. That's pretty nerve-wracking if you ask me. Take a look at that. If they can't do something to bolster this dollar and buoy it and get it back up, I can't imagine anything other than the rest of the commodity markets exploding in price because the dollar is being devalued, the stock market getting hammered, and the euro currency and the British pound and other major currencies taking off against the dollar. Here's the technical picture, traders. You need to do your homework on this. And then, of course, you have the bond market, right? The bond market also gives you a lot of, a lot of picture on your whole analysis of what's going on. The bond market will usually tell you that what you're looking at is correct if everything is the opposite of what bonds are doing. Well, let's go look at one last chart now. Let's look at the bond chart. Okay, traders, what you're looking at now is the September daily bond, 30-year bond chart, the September. Okay, look at this major resistance right here. And we took a run, a flight to quality run today and got above that major resistance. However, traders, keep this in mind. We are in a bear flag pattern. Here's your flag, Paul. Here's your flag. We are testing the resistance and support within that bearish flag. And you have the 200 bar moving average right here. And you know what it looks like is gonna happen to me, traders? We're gonna run up and touch that average and that's gonna stop the bond market and repel it straight back down. And at that point, likely, then we'll get a little bit of recovery in the S&P and the other indice markets. So they're all trading hand in hand and they're all creating a picture. That picture right now is bonds broke out above resistance and wants to go test its 200 ball moving average. And look at stochastics already showing us that if bonds get there, they will be tired and begin to turn down. So there is a nice picture being painted here, technically, traders, between the indice markets, the currency markets, and the bond credit markets. You can see for yourselves, the analysis is working as it should in unison with one another. And boy, oh boy, is there a lot of homework for you to do when I'm done with this video. So make sure you do your own homework, check your analysis against mine, and see if your technical picture does not equal my technical picture. So, you've seen those charts, right? You may want to call me a donkey, but those charts don't lie. They're no donkey, that's for sure. Those charts tell you where this market is going. Traders, does that head and shoulders formation tell you what's going to happen next or what? That was a beautiful projection. It was telegraphed by that huge head and shoulders. Albeit we expected it to happen Friday, and we may still get a whole lot of it on Friday. Now remember, traders, we had a 300-plus down day in the Dow on Thursday. There is going to be what I like to call forced liquidation margin selling on Friday morning. And what that is, to refresh your memory, is this. Every broker in town is going to be calling up every doctor, dentist, and lawyer that owns stocks, and they're going to say... Would you like to send more money in or do you want to liquidate your stocks because you owe margin money? 
And a lot of those traders have had it up to here with the way this market's dropping, and they're gonna to wanna to liquidate those stocks. It also hits the commodity markets because a lot of times they get the phone call and say they wanna liquidate some of your commodities in order to hold on to your stock portfolio and vice versa. And a lot of times it is, I've had enough pain, get me out of my positions. So expect margin liquidation, forced margin liquidation selling at least the first half of Friday, but you got another problem. How many fund managers you think want to go up to their boss tomorrow on a Friday after a big drop we had Thursday under a massive head and shoulders formation and say, hey boss, let's load up stocks on a Friday afternoon in a bear market? I don't think so. I can't imagine any fund managers loading up tomorrow. So I think if it rallies at all, you need to sell into it and expect some more downside. This could be one of those Thursday, Friday, Monday type routes. Who knows? We trade one day at a time. But I do expect that tomorrow you are going to need to be a seller of rallies. With that in mind, for Friday, June 27, 2008, we got a red army, baby. Let's go. Red army, let's go. All right. For the E-mini, the ESU, Omni says to sell in the mid to high 1290s. We are trading 1290 right now while I'm doing this video, traders, so get your orders in. Sell the SEP E-mini S&P in the mid to high 1290s. Put your stop in a sensible place that you can live with. But hey, traders, volatility is insane lately. So you better put that stop. You know, you've heard me say this many times before, but don't step up to the plate in Yankee Stadium with a wiffle ball bat in your hand because there's no way you're going to hit the ball back at one of those professional pitchers. Well, that applies here. Don't try to trade commodities, especially the S&P in this volatile situation with a small stop because it's only going to cost you. So don't put small stops in tomorrow. All right, traders, sell you in the mid to high 1290s. Omni's profit objective is the mid to low 1250s or be out by the close, mid to low 1250s. Now, on the way down, we do expect support at 1278. And then again at around 1264 if they get through the 1278 area. So there could be a lot of downside. Now, will there be some short covering profit taking? Well, it's a possibility and that might give you a rally. But I'm selling into those rallies tomorrow. Remember, it's Friday in a bear market. Who needs it, right? Who needs to load up on a Friday? But you never know what you're going to get. So always place your stops and always place them first. In fact, Thank goodness for stops, man. A stop is your best friend. I'll tell you that right now because we had our stop below 1307 on Thursday. It knocked us out and we were safe and out of that market. Could you imagine not having a stop in yesterday? That market dropped almost $50 in the S&P. Where would you be if you got long towards the top and had no stop in? You'd be one of those people wishing that you were out instead of being on the sidelines wishing that you were in. So make sure you put your stops in, put them in first. And if you don't know how to play stops or why to play stops or how to read these charts, again, make sure you come join the Army of Omniacs at my site. We're all in chat rooms together, teaching and learning with one another, and we will help you get this right. So make sure you come on down to livewithoscar.com and see if you can uh, interact with us and learn a little something. Traders, there's nothing wrong with higher education when it comes to analysis, and you can never, ever know enough about analysis to get it right every day. So come on down. All right, traders, give me a call anytime you'd like there at night, 702-629-4755. And as always, keep sending me those emails, even if they're like the donkey email. I don't mind. I take them all. So shoot me out those emails to Oscar at futuresanalysts.com. Okay, traders. I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to do another video before next week because I'm off to New York City on Friday. This video is for Friday. It's Thursday night as I'm filming it. On Friday, I go to New York. Monday, Tuesday, we may trade just a little bit. You know me. One of my basic rules is that I do not trade the days leading up to a major holiday. And at the end of next week is 4th of July here in the United States. That is a biggie, traders. That's a big holiday. A lot of traders take off during the week of the 4th of July, and I don't like playing in thin markets. So I may or may not get a video out for you Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, somewhere around there. And then after that, 
I'm off to do whatever it is that brokers do when they're not trading until the holiday smoke clears. And I'd advise you to do the same. I kid you not, you will get chopped up during holiday weeks. Those pre-holiday trading weeks are miserable. And if you want to go back and look at my last couple of videos before the last major holiday, I gave you a very good lesson on what happens before a holiday and what should happen after the holiday. And that happens with every major holiday. So we will cover that in the next videos going forward and we will trade that holiday the way it should be traded. But be careful, traders. Heed my warning. Try not to do anything after Tuesday next week. All right, traders, that's about all I'm going to do in this video. I'm about to get out of here. Don't forget, sell the rallies tomorrow and keep your emotions out of trading. One of the best ways you can do that is to say this to yourselves over and over again. And you know what that is? Stuffs are in. Emotions are out. Futures trading is risky and can cause substantial financial loss. We do not claim or guarantee that you will profit from the information provided. That being said, I am a 24-year seasoned trader on and off the floors. This is how I've made my living for many, many years. Good luck trading.